What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I bring you the latest Destiny 2 news via the Bungie weekly update and some great things to talk about. But before we get into it guys, if you do enjoy the video and would like to support the channel, hitting that like button truly does that. So go ahead and smash that thing. Also guys, if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos unlike anywhere else, be sure to subscribe. So let's get into it. So the weekly Bungie update starts with this. This week at Bungie we are preparing for the future. Recently we updated the development roadmap with some new milestones. September was plied as a new waypoint with a hint of more yet to be revealed. The time for that reveal has come. Here's your host with the details for our next really big show, Court Indeed, right here. We'd like to invite you to catch a glimpse of what we have planned for the second year of Destiny 2. We have some big ideas for how we're going to transform your guardian lifestyle and reinforce your hobby as an interplanetary hero. We'll tell you about it and we'll do it live. You'll hear from many members of our development team who will set some big goals for September in their own words. We'll explore deeper into new territory with game director Steve Cotton and project lead Scott Taylor, two faces you might recognise from previous reviews. We'll respond to a bunch of community feedback and unveil some other things you haven't even been looking forward to yet. We'll top it all off with a look at a new roadmap with exciting new promises for everyone. The Destiny 2 reveal will be on June 5th, Tuesday, 9am Pacific, live on Twitch. And guys, you do not want to miss that. We don't want to miss that. This will be the beginning of a conversation that will last all summer long. You won't want to miss it. We hope to see your names in chat as you give us your hot takes and spam those emotes. And guys, if we look at the reveal image of the Destiny 2 Year 2 reveal, where it states the date and the time and where it's going to be revealed and shit. Look at this image. Does that not look like the Reef to you people? Are we going back to the Reef? How is this? What's going on? Is Prison of Outlaws coming back? What? When? How? Fallen? Are we actually going to partner with the Fallen? This is a theory we have heard from many, many people. And that would be absolutely... I've got, got a feeling, people. I've got a feeling. But that definitely looks like the Reef to me. What do you think? Let me know down below within that comment section. I think we are going to the reef. Ah. Okay, so we're going to move on. And Faction Rallies is back, people, with some massive changes. So let's get into it. Destiny Update 1.2.1 brought improvements to Faction Rallies for Season 3. Back in March, the season's team discussed their overall goals for the event. Today, we'll revisit those goals and outline the changes that have been made to achieve them. Pledging to a faction should be a meaningful choice. Players may now only pledge to one faction per account during a Faction Rallies event. Reputation progress is retained through multiple events and it will not reset during the season even if a player changes allegiance. Each faction offers unique rewards such as exotic armor ornaments or masterwork catalysts for exotic weapons. We are planning to host three faction rally events over the course of season three. Dead Orbit will offer the Eye of Another World ornament and the Graviton Lance catalyst. New Monarchy will offer the Crest of Alpha Loopy ornament and the Sweet Business catalyst. Future Walker will offer the Knucklehead Radar ornament and the Sunshot catalyst. Now it doesn't state here, but within the vendor tab, within the companion app, official Bungie companion app, it does state that you need to reach a rank 50 to earn these catalysts and these ornaments, which is a thousand tokens, people. A thousand tokens, people. Seasonal vendor progression. Each faction now features ranks, which players can reach by earning faction tokens. Faction rank up rewards will continue to grant legendary armor and weapons past rank 30. We can see Dead Orbit, New Monarchy and Future Warcraft and what they have to offer on screen now. And some of this looks juicy, it really does. Faction Rally should provide a unique gameplay experience and simply not be a reward layer on top of the existing game. Additionally, these events should build interest in Lost Sectors and Armor Ornament objectives. Faction Rallies now features the Renown system. After pledging to a faction, players may earn Renown by completing a public event or patrol, or by defeating high value targets on destinations. Players who loot a lost sector with Renown active will receive significantly more faction tokens than usual. The more stacks of Renown they have, the more faction tokens they earn. Renown is lost when players are defeated by enemies, so be careful when attempting to loot a lost sector with high renown. Renown increases the level of challenge in gameplay. Health regeneration is vastly reduced, all stack levels. Enemy kills have a chance to drop half orbs, all stack levels. Player damage decreased, scales with stack up to 5. 
Incoming damage increased. Scales we stack up to five. While we know one is active on a player, others around them can see which faction the players are pledged to. Now that is absolutely epic as you can see on screen now. That looks like a proper aura people. That is the sort of aura I would chase in game. Note, we know one displays which faction a guardian is pledged to but only from a third person view. This functionality applies to all players. Faction rallies will continue to feature a winner's offering to the faction that earned the most rank packages during a given event. These rewards will then be available in the rank up reward pool in the following event. During seasons 1 and 2, new monarchy dominate the charts. We're eager to see whether Dead Orbit or Future Warcult can pick up some wins. And I believe on screen now we can see the three winning weapons. Faction rallies will be available Tuesday, June 5th at 10 a.m. PDT through to the following weekly reset. We'll continue to collect feedback when Traction Rallies is live and monitor the conversations. So that is epic people and I cannot wait, I seriously can't. Sounds good in this new renowned system may make reaching that rank 50 a little bit easier because collecting 1000 tokens people is going to be scandalous without some kind of buff it really is. We're then going to talk about Crucible Labs and how it's showed down this that and the other. If you do want to check it out I will link the whole twab within the video description. Not much here interesting to state in my opinion so we're going to skip past that and they're then going to talk about the escalation protocol and escalation protocol has been a hot topic since the release of warmind we've been tracking feedback ranging from difficulty to fire team size design lead jacob benton and design lead ben Walmack are making some changes to the experience in Jacob and Ben right here. The moment this weekly update goes live, the power levels for Escalation Protocol enemies will be lowered in waves 4 to 7. Waves 1 and 3 are unchanged and will retain a 370 power. So still watch out for that level 2 wizard boss. Players who have stayed on Mars since before this update will need to turn to orbit and land on Mars again to see the following changes. Old values. Wave 1, 370, wave 2, 370, and wave 3, 370, wave 4, 385, wave 5, 385, wave 6, 400, and wave 7, 400. New values, wave 1, 370, wave 2, 370, wave 3, 370, wave 4, 380, wave 5, 380, wave 6, 385, and wave 7, 385. Note, to avoid matching into an area that has been running since before the change, wait a short time after this update before landing on Mars again to attempt escalation protocol. How will make in this change normally changing enemy power levels requires a patch but during development we created unique server flags which can flip between two sets of power levels for all escalation protocol enemies these were created in the wake of the community summit when we decided to make the activity even more difficult the flags don't require any download from you to flip which is how we can enact this change so quickly reasons for the change we've been looking at our internal data while listening to all of your feedback about escalation protocol since the launch of warmind reading these stats not as many players are attempting escalation protocol with a fire team of three as our designs intended mostly because of how difficulty wave six and seven are tweaking the difficulty of wave six and seven very quickly through power level changes is something we can do right away because of the server flags mentioned above rather than waiting any number of weeks to deliver a patch by reducing the power levels of the later waves, we're intending to make Escalation Protocol more approachable for players who want to try that activity at 385 as a fire team of three with potential help from others in the world. Getting nine players into the same space will still be possible, but for those at close to max level, it shouldn't feel as necessary as before. If anyone is worried that we're nerfing this activity into the ground, rest assured that it will still be a highly difficult end game experience. All the mechanics, timers and enemy behaviours will remain unchanged so you should still plan to bring your best team, gear and strategies to succeed. So I suppose that's cool for people who are struggling to complete it. I mean it doesn't bother me whether it's 400 or 385. It is what it is. And to end the video people they say tomorrow issue 2 of the Warmind Digital Comic will be available. So that should be a pretty cool read too. And guys, we have come to the end of the video. Some great things to discuss down below within that comment section. Faction rallies, I can't wait for. But a thousand tokens, people. A thousand tokens. What faction are you pledging to? Let me know. I think a lot of people are going to be pledging to Dead Orbit just for the Graviton Lance catalyst which does do i think plus 20 range and you get hidden hand which is plus 15 aim assist which is just ridiculous i don't think the weapon needs it it's crazy as it is but i think that is definitely the faction most people are going to pledge to dead orbit here i come on that note guys we have come to the end of the video thanks as always for stopping by if you enjoyed it leaving a like truly does help me out and hopefully people i will see you on that next one always
Get it right.